Hello, my name is Jennifer Bello, and for this video case assignment, I will be discussing the Chandler v. Florida 1981 case. To give a brief introduction to the case before I begin, two Miami police officers were charged with burglarizing a local restaurant. Their trial gained much media attention. Local television, television stations televised a small portion of the trial, thanks to a recent Florida Supreme Court decision which permitted, with certain restrictions, electronic media to record judicial proceedings. Officers Chandler and Granger, who in this case are considered the appellants, which is a person who appeals to a higher court for the reversal of a decision in a lower court, were amongst the lawsuit with the state of Florida, who in this case were the appellee, which is the respondent to a case appealed to a higher court. The case was argued November 12, 1980, and Chief Justice Warren Berger decided the case on January 26, 1981. Three main advocates to the case were Jim Smith and Calvin L. Fox, who argued the case for the state of Florida, the appellee, and Joel Hirshhorn, who argued the case for Chandler and Granger, the appellants. The main question that came from this case is, does allowing radio, television, and still photography coverage of a criminal trial for public broadcast violate the accused right to fair trial as guaranteed by the 6th and 14th Amendments? Before the case was taken to the Supreme Court of the United States, the Florida District Court of Appeals affirmed finding no evidence that the presence of television cameras hampered the appellants in presenting their case, deprived them from impartial jury, or impaired the fairness of the trial. When discussing the legal details of the case, we consider that while refraining from formally overruling the Eats v. Texas case, which occurred in 1965, that held media coverage was infringing the fundamental rights to fair trial guaranteed by the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment and effectively did so. The holding of the case is that the Constitution does not prohibit a state from experimenting with a program such as is authorized by Florida's Canon 3A7. The canon permits electronic media and still photography coverage of judicial proceedings, subject to the control of the presiding judge and to implementing guidelines by placing on trial judges obligations to protect the fundamental rights of the accused in a criminal case to fair trial. To go into further detail, the Constitution does not prohibit a state from experimenting with the programs such as Florida's Canon 3A7. Um, an absolute constitutional ban on broadcast coverage of trials cannot be justified simply because there is a danger that in some cases, not all cases, that the conducting of a broadcast during a trial will impair the ability of the jurors to decide the issue of guilt or innocence influenced or uninfluenced by extraneous or also known as outside matter. Also, appellants have not proven that the media's coverage of their trial, printed or broadcasted, compromised the jury's ability to judge them fairly, or that the broadcast coverage of their particular trial had an adverse impact on the trial participants sufficiently enough to constitute denial of due process. While well, considering how this applies to communication, we as mass communications majors, our future jobs depend upon open communication with mass audiences. If a law were to be put in place prohibiting reporters or any media of that sort to enter a courtroom during criminal trials, we would, it would be very difficult for us to report the accurate occurrences within a trial if we aren't allowed in and had to base it off of he said, she said, and deciphering the very difficult to read court reports. And also as communicators, we are responsible to keep the public in the loop. And for someone like myself that is interested in law, I like to be kept informed from reliable sources such as news broadcasts. So in conclusion, the court found no constitutional violation in the case. The decision maker of the case, um, Chief Justice Berger, first denied Chandler and Granger's claim that the court's holding in Eats First Texas in 1965 regarded television cameras in the courtroom as offensive to due process. State experimentation with evolving technology in the courtroom, as long as it does not infringe on the fundamental guarantees of the accused, is consistent with the Constitution. Furthermore, Florida's policy was implemented with strict guidelines intended to protect the rights of a defendant to fair trial. For example, the state required its courts to protect certain witnesses from the glare of the publicity and to hear and consider arguments from a defendant who felt that the electronic coverage may be biased towards the jury. Um, all in all, Chandler and Granger objected to the coverage and were found guilty as charged, and broadcasters and other forms of media are still allowed in courtrooms with certain restrictions to protect those involved. Thank you.